Hey guys, welcome back to the layout once again. Um, today we have another DCC and programming video. In the last one we looked at setting up a consist with three locomotives, um, but an important part of consisting is of course speed matching, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so there's many ways to speed match. Um, one of those is using a computer interface with JMRI. Uh, you could also um, program manually without the computer interface uh, each individual speed step voltage value but with that you have to program a lot of CVs you can get really specific with it um, but today we're just gonna look at three CVs and using those three we can set a simple three-point speed curve um, and for me that's good enough to get my locomotives really well speed matched uh, it's not that hard and it goes really quick so anyway we'll talk about what those three CVs are what they control and then we'll look at our consist which we worked on last time and we'll get that all uh, get those locomotives matched up together so they run well Alright guys, so here is our three-point speed curve, um, and I'm trying to explain this somewhat quickly. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, as you can see, this is our speed curve as it's called, and it's a three-point speed curve because there's three points along it. Um, of course, realize that each of these lines here, each of these curves, is separate. So this isn't supposed to be one thing. These are three different representations of a speed curve. Um, on the bottom axis here, uh, this is your throttle range. So as you can see, I have 0, 64, and 128. That is the beginning, middle, and end of your throttle input. Um, so these are in terms of speed steps. So that's 0 speed steps, 64 speed steps, 128 speed steps. And of course, there are speed steps in between, but I just I didn't want to write them all in because that would be uh, kind of pointless. And then beneath each of those points, um, the start, beginning, and end, I have three CVs. And these are important. We have CV2 which is your start voltage, CV6 is your mid voltage, and CV5 is your max voltage. And these are going to control uh, how much power or how much speed the locomotive has at each, points along, each point along the throttle curve. Um, so, um, and we'll come back, to, come back to that in a second. Then along this axis, the Y axis, uh, we're talking about voltage here. And this is, in a sense, the power from the motor, or to the motor really, um, and what this translates into is then speed. Um, so think of this in terms of speed and this in terms of throttle input. So um, CV2, as I said, is your start voltage, CV6 mid voltage, CV5 max voltage. And as you can see, uh, the most typical curve I think that we think of isn't really a curve at all, it's the straight line. And this is easiest to think about um, because it's a one-to-one -one relationship between your throttle input and your power output, we'll just call it power output, or speed, I'll call this speed, so throttle input and speed. Um, and what that means then is that at uh, no throttle, right, I, that's a bad representation, let's say at speed step one you're moving at really small low speed, so at one speed step let's say you're moving about one mile per hour. Then you're working your way up through the throttle range, when you meet or when you hit half throttle or 64 speed steps you should be going half speed um, or half power and what, so what that creates then is a one-to-one -one, uh, proportion which winds up creating a straight line up to this point obviously and then beyond that in the second half of the speed range so that's from half throttle to full throttle or in other words from speed step 64 to 128 we are going to increase from half speed to full speed because this is half throttle and this is full throttle so we're going to go from uh, half speed to full speed um, and to do that you're going to program your CVs using a value from 0 to 255 so each of these CVs here at each point along the throttle range controls how much power is at each of those points so uh, you can think of power in terms of 0 to 100 uh, percent but when it comes down to it you're going to have to translate that percentage into a value between 0 and 255 to program into each of these CV values. Um, so for CV2, your start voltage, you're going to want this value to be pretty low. So this is going to be a, a value like 1 or 2 or 5, something like that. CV6 then, if we're doing the straight line, we want that to be half throttle, because or half speed. Because this is half throttle, we want this to be at half speed. So that's going to be a value of uh, 127 or 128, but 127 is about half of 255. So then at full throttle, we want full speed or 100% speed, and that's going to give us a value of 255 under CV5. 
5. So CV5 is going to be a value of 255, CV6 a value of 127 for half speed, and then CV2 we want to be a value of probably 1 or 2, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but then we can create a different type of speed curve by changing the value of CV6. And we can change the value of the others as well, but for the most part we want CV2 to stay uh, as low as possible for all locomotives. And CV5, unless you really want to limit the top speed of your locomotives, um, I'm going to keep that at 255. But we can create a speed curve such as this one here by decreasing the value of CV6. So at half throttle, maybe we don't want to be going half speed, maybe we want to be going quarter speed. Um, so we would program a value, it doesn't really matter, just something less than 127. So let's say a value of 80 for that point right there. Um, and again, since CV5 is staying at a value of 255, well, it's not really here, but let's just say that's, let's say that's a value of 200 or whatever. You're still going to get the same effect where between no throttle and half throttle, um, you're going to accelerate somewhat slowly, but then between half throttle and full throttle, there's going to be a jump in acceleration uh, in which the uh, jump in speed between speed steps in this range is going to be greater than the disparity between uh, speed steps in this range of the throttle, or this range here. So you can create a speed curve like that, or a speed curve like this dotted one by programming in a value of CV6, uh, or a CV6 value greater than 127, so let's say this is like 170 or something like that. Um, and I don't know, this is 220. So by changing the values here, you can see we can create different speed curves. And of course, I know this seems like just a lot of numbers and talking, but I bring this up because it's really important to speed matching. So, we have three locomotives that we're going to be dealing with today. Um, odds are I'll really just program two. But let's say that you had three locomotives out of the box. It's possible that all those three locomotives might run like this. So maybe one has a speed curve like that, one has a straight speed curve, and another has a speed curve like that. So what we want to wind up doing is pick a locomotive, it doesn't matter which locomotive, that you want the other locomotives to run like. So just for simplicity, let's pick this straight speed curve here, and let's make it so that we, we have the other locomotives mimic that speed curve. So when you're speed matching, essentially what you're doing then is changing this value here for this speed curve and moving it up slowly until it overlaps with this point here and then what we wind up with is we can get rid of that line and it becomes this line and the same is true for this this point up here so we want this point to move up slowly until it becomes that point um, and when that happens then this locomotive is speed matched with this locomotive now we have this curve here that accelerates more quickly in the lower speed range so we want to bring this point CV6 we want to bring that value down until it matches with this point here and then once again uh, the same is true for this this point up here so when we do that we wind up with locomotives that run the same together and that's what we're going to do right now so once again we're going to deal with this consist here um, so Again, let's say if we have three locomotives, uh, we want to program two of them to run like the one. So for this consist, I'm going to go ahead and pick our lead unit here, um, and we're going to try to program the other two like this one. Um, to keep the video short, I'm only going to deal with one other locomotive, and like I, I usually do when I program, or when I speed match, I usually deal with only one locomotive at a time. So I'll, I have these consists together, but what I'm going to do is take our trailing unit 7519 down there. I'll take that off the tracks and I will deal with programming or speed matching our mid unit there to the characteristics of our lead unit here. So we just deal with one at a time. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've gone ahead, I actually put these two locomotives that I'm dealing with on separate tracks so it's easier to, to speed match them so we can run them through their speed curves. Uh, but the first thing we're going to look at is speed step one. We're just going to throw it into speed step one and that's going to be really indicative of what our CV2 value is. Of course, we don't know the actual numbers, um, but we know uh, what they are relative to each other. Um, so here's speed step one. And as you can see, um, our mid unit has a CV2 value that is much, much greater uh, than our lead unit. Um, so that's obviously not going to work 
Um, so again, we don't know what that value is, but we want to decrease the CV2 value. Um, so I, I think the easiest thing to do is drop CV2 all the way down to one or two, um, which I'll do, and then work up from there until it matches this unit here. So I just got our start voltage um, pretty close. Um, it's not, I guess, 100% close, but it's as close as it's going to get. Um, so now the next step then is going to uh, be to find that mid voltage. So we're going to crank up the throttle. Um, we're going to run these guys backwards here, and we're going to get above um, speed step one, obviously. We're going to get into some higher speed ranges, and we're going to see as we accelerate from speed step one how the locomotives stay together. So I'm going to bring them back here. And as it turns out, these two actually, after changing CV2 uh, on that second unit, run quite well together. So the mid-range voltage uh, must be pretty similar. But it looks like the second unit has a slightly higher value. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, change that value then. Uh, to make. I'm going to bring that value down until its characteristics, that mid-range mid um, speed, matches our lead unit here. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. So I just adjusted the mid-range voltage, that's CV6, on our second unit out. And now they run uh, really close together when you when you hit uh, a higher speed step. So again, that's around speed step 70 that I brought them up to, and I want to make sure that uh, they run at the same speed at that point. So we know that along half the speed range, the locomotives run well together. Um, of course, you also want to check that higher speed range. That's going to be about uh, speed step 64 and above. Um, I don't want to get too redundant with this video, so I'm not going to show that. But typically, uh, the high or the max speed of locomotives is, is pretty similar anyway, so you don't have to change the value of CV5 too much. I usually just max that out to a value of 255. If there's a huge difference, then I go ahead and change it, um, but I didn't have to with these locomotives. So anyway, these are speed matched together now. I'll go ahead and do that with our third locomotive, and then they should be ready to run in a consist.
So anyway, guys, I think that's about it for this video. Um, I apologize that it took so long. I feel like that was a lot of wordy material, especially when I was explaining the, the speed curves and all that. Um, so some of it, I think I used a lot of words interchangeably like power, voltage, and speed. So if that confused anyone, please comment. Um, I don't think I was as clear as I could be, uh, but hopefully it all kind of made sense in the end. Um, it's really simple when it comes down to it. Uh, it's three CVs. You change the values of those relative to how they, how they seem in other locomotives, and by changing them, we get locomotives that run the same together. So there's no need to really stress out about making sure that you program each speed step individually in a speed curve to get the locomotives to run together. You can really speed match locomotives just using three points along that curve with these three CVs. So um, it's really easy, it's really quick, that's how I do it. I think that's how most people do it uh, in a pinch. But uh, yeah, hopefully that all made sense. If it didn't, comment. And uh, anyway, I think the next video we're going to be talking about load compensation and momentum. And by combining those two we can create really cool realistic train handling which, which makes running on layouts, especially with uh, grades and stuff, really fun. Um, so I'll talk about that in the next video. So you have that to look forward to as well as some more layout updates coming up. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.